Hi all, thank you for jumping on the call today. Uh, today we have Kelsey, one of our wonderful consultants and bloggers, uh, sharing information on RecLogic with you. So if you could please uh, go ahead and mute yourself so we don't have to mute everyone. And with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Kelsey. Good morning everybody. Uh, Center for Sound, I'm Kelsey Andridge, and today we're going to be reviewing tips and tricks for the third party supported software here at IBIS, um, RecLogic. We're first going to define and review the RecLogic application and kind of from a high level. We'll then get into some of the benefits of the software, including tips and hints that really, I think, enhance the end user experience. Once we're finished with the presentation, I'll open the webinar up to the to discussion and questions from you guys. What is RecLogic? We'll answer this question first and get it out of the way. RecLogic is a leading web-based procurement, requisitioning, invoice and expense processing, and workflow application. RecLogic integrates seamlessly with each of the Dynamics ERP products, including Dynamics AX, Dynamics GP, Dynamics NAB and Dynamics SL. RecLogic utilizes the .NET and XML web services provided through the .NET framework. Because RecLogic provides the real-time integration with the Dynamics ERP solutions, the entry and approval of transactions becomes very efficient and very accurate. I'd like to briefly review the different transaction types in RecLogic that can be entered and reviewed. We first have the requisition transactions. The requisitions are created with the intent that they'll become purchase orders that are pushed to the Dynamics application. RecLogic purchase orders can be received against online as well as within the Dynamics solution. And also, just a quick note, the references I'm giving on this slide and throughout the rest of the presentation relate to Microsoft Dynamics GP. Another common transaction is the expense transaction. Once fully approved, the expense transaction will create a voucher in the Dynamics application. The requisition and expense transactions are the most common we see implemented in our clients today. The timesheet time transaction is also available for employees who enter times for Dynamics GP projects. These RecLogic timesheets create corresponding timesheets against the employee and the Dynamics application once fully approved. Finally, you have the vendor invoices. The vendor invoices transactions will create payable vouchers in the Dynamics product. Why do our clients get to decide to go with RecLogic? There are a number of reasons, and through my implementations and experience with the software, these are some of the most important that I find getting really good feedback on. The online capability of RecLogic really allows transaction submission interview anytime from anywhere. There's an additional RecLogic mobile feature that can enhance its functionality more because it will allow you to enter transactions as well as review transactions from mobile devices. Common devices I've seen this in is iPhones, Blackberry devices, the Android phones, any smartphones. And we're also seeing it being used in iPads now that they're becoming more common in the workplace. RecLogic's 100% browser interface is familiar and comfortable for end users. The transaction windows are easy to read and are consistent across different transactions. The web-based trade of RecLogic provides easy access, whether you're wired at your office or if you're at the airport trying to enter your baggage claim expenses. For transaction review, RecLogic provides the most flexible routing criteria I've seen out there. there. It's almost endless the way you can decide to route your transactions for review by managers and supervisors. They can, they can contain as many steps and have met many of the needs I've worked with. It's been very flexible and it's proven to be the solution for any routing need. For example, you may want to base your routing on the transaction amount, and you can enter dollar thresholds, or even the requester's department. Now that we've gotten a very quick and brief overview
overview of the RevLogic application, I'd like to go ahead and dig into the tips and tricks I want to share with you guys today. We're going to be discussing some of the features of user preferences within RevLogic. I'd like to demonstrate the search and duplicate function. And I'd also like to review um, an expense transaction import. Within user preferences, there are three areas that I see often used by the end users as well as the managers who are setting up the application. Password update becomes important, delegation range setup, and favorite icons creation. And we're going to go through each of these in detail. Before we get into user preferences, I'd like to quickly, for those of you who haven't seen RepLogic before, I'd like to kind of give you a um, brief rundown of the RecLogic homepage. First thing is, in the upper left-hand corner of this screen capture we have here, there's obviously the RecLogic logo, but right below that you will always have your window title, whether you're in my homepage, my transaction, customization, so on and so on. In the middle of the navigation pane up at the top, uh, you see a little document icon right now that is an example of a favorites icon that we're going to discuss how to set up here in just a minute. Right below that, though, we have all of the menu selections, transactions, reports and inquiries, buyer tasks, setup tasks, customizations, and administration. The permissions for the menu options under each one are controlled through access rights within the application. You can set as lenient security as you'd like, or you can make it as tight as you'd like. You can also enter a system message here. Right now we have notes that this is test rec logic. If you're in a test environment, you can put a note like that in there. If you're in production, you can put a very bold note in there saying, please do not enter test transactions. This is live data. Below we see that your recent transactions view, which is expandable and collapsible with a little Chevron button in the left. If you are a requester, you will see all of the documents you have created here. All of these examples are of requisitions, but the expense, vendor invoice, and timesheet all have different um, icons that go with them, so visually you can discern what kind of document you're looking at. Here you can view really quick information about your transactions. If you ever need to view more detailed information, maybe about the lines or the routing, you can simply click on the document icon to the left of the line. If you are a reviewer within RecLogic, you will also have a Your Approval queue, which will contain any RecLogic transactions that require your review before they can move on in the process. It will simply say Your Approval queue. It will have the documents below. There are options in RecLogic to either quick approve directly from a window like this with, a simple, with two simple mouse clicks, or you can require that reviewers go in, open the document, really view the information before they make a decision. Up in the upper right hand corner, we have the buttons and additional display information. The date will always display for you on the far left. This is an example from Friday, August 12th. The middle display information will contain the company that you are working with in. And then on the far right will display your username for who you are logged in as. The information in the top uh, kind of darker teal section of the window will always be available no matter what window you're from. So the preferences, logout, and home window are always available. Preference, preferences is what we'll be looking at. If you click logout, that'll take you back to the RecLogic login screen. And if you are anywhere within the application, if you click the home button, it'll bring you back to your home page. So we'll go ahead and get started with user preferences. To navigate there, you simply click the preferences button. And this is a screen capture of what this window looks like. Again, in the upper left-hand corner, you can see that the pref I've highlighted the preferences because we have the window title there. As I said, the first thing I'd like to kind of discuss is any password updates that may be required. Your system manager may have decided to put an expiration date on your password. If that's the case, you can come here to update it, or if you just need to enter a new password, you feel like your security has been uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Has been breached. You can come here and update that as well. All you have to do is click the update. You have to mark the update password checkbox here. And then the password and retype fields become available. You simply click your cursor in the password field, type your new password in, 
and then re-enter it in the retype field and save your user preferences. The second topic I'd like to discuss under user preferences is the delegation ID. If you are a, review, if you are a reviewer within the RecLogic application, and you will be unavailable to review transactions that are routed to you, this is where you're going to come set up a delegate ID. You may be on vacation, you may be out of a separate client and unavailable for review. All you have to simply do is enter the delegate ID. You can use the lookup icon on the far right of this field. If you do decide to use that, the results will only display users who are set up to review within RecLogic. Select your delegate ID, and then the delegation date range field. Enter your beginning date in the first field and your ending date in the second field. It's important to note that when you're entering your delegation date range, this will only affect transactions that are submitted to you for routing review within that date range. If there is a document in your approval queue for 8-21-2011, you're still responsible for reviewing that document. Jay McKinnon isn't responsible until 8-22-3-26. This is important information. The requester can also view this on their document. If they're looking to see where it's sitting or expenses haven't been approved yet, we can also view this information there. The third item I'd like to discuss under user preferences is the favorite icons. Um, down at the bottom of the user preferences page is the favorite menu items section. You see on the left your available menu items. Again, this list may be restricted if your permissions to some of these windows are restricted. And then you also have on the right your My Favorites that have been selected for favorites icons. This is a very simple, simple setup to do. You just uh, find your menu item in the left pane that you would like to select. Click the Add button in the middle of the window, and then you'll appear over in your favorite. Once you save your user preferences, you will see all of your favorites icons appear at the top of your RecLogic navigation name. And these are automatic. You don't have to log out or log back in to see these or anything. And if the icon isn't very clear, I'm pretty positive that when you hover over it, it will give you a little a uh, text box telling what menu item you selected for your favorite. Now that we've discussed user preferences, I'd also like to discuss the search and duplicate functionality within RecLogic. I feel like at the beginning of my RecLogic implementations, this wasn't something that users were really taking advantage of, and it can be super helpful for those users who are entering a lot of transactions. Three things I'm going to review here. There's the copy an entire document functionality, or you can choose to copy individual lines, whether it be from a single document or across multiple documents. Search and Duplicate is great for creating and using a document template. I'll go ahead and kind of explain why I like that so much right now. If you are traveling on um, a project three weeks out of the month for several months, what you can do is you can go into your expense transactions, fill out all of your header information, and then put on your expense lines, your airfare, your hotel, your rent-a-car, the mileage you usually drive, the gas that you usually have to fill up on your tank, the meals, if you're going to get per diem, you can put that in there. And what you can do is, just because you created the transaction doesn't mean it has to be submitted. You can simply save it. What I then go in is, well, you, I'll show you how to go through search and duplicate. You can find that document, copy the entire document, and then just go in and edit the amounts and the dates, the descriptions, whatever you editing you need to do. So that's one reason why I really like search and duplicate, especially for the expense side of things. The search and duplicate functionality is found under, under the transactions pane. When you click on these uh, menus here at the top of RecLogic, there will be a drop down and it will it will excuse me it will display all of the menu items that you have access to. This is what the search and duplicate window looks like when you first get there. Again, search and duplicate um, menu title in the upper left hand corner. Then we have our filter criteria area. All you need to do in the filter criteria is enter as many 
requirements or as few requirements for the documents that you want to have resolved. The requester field will always default in with your user ID. And I, oft I often find myself using the document type uh, drop down field. You can search on your requisitions, your invoices, your expenses, and things like that. If you know by status you'd like to use, you can use that one as well, or maybe even vendor if you're doing for a particular vendor requisition. In this example, I had my admin requester requisition documents, and I only wanted them for a specific date range of April 8th to April 8th. Once you've entered your filter criteria, in the upper right-hand corner is an apply filter button. Once you click that, anything that comes up in the results below the filter criteria is only what has met the requirements you've entered. Here I've got at least two. I may have more if I had scrolled to the bottom of the screen. But we now appear here. We can obviously see there the admin requester. It is a requisition document. And we can't see the date from here. But these are all for April 8th. What I'd like to first look at is copying an entire document. So say we have pulled up our expense template that we had put together for ourselves. If we knew the document number, we could have typed that into the criteria as well. Beside the document number field for each line, there is a copy document icon. To copy the entire document, all you have to do is click it. I circled it in red, for example. When you click to copy the document, it will ask you, are you sure you want to copy it? You click OK or cancel. And then you'll also get another message saying you have successfully created however many lines were on that document. In this example, we just have one. The only information that differs when you copy a document will be the document number up in the top left-hand corner of this screen capture, as well as the date, the description, routing policy, company, even everything on the line. All of that will be copied exactly from the source document. So here, the document number will just grab the next system-generated document number. In this case, this is a requisition. And the date will default with the system date. Back on our search and duplicate page, I'd like to show you how to copy across multiple transactions or documents. In this example, I would like the line from document 10009, and I'd like to put it on my first document here, 10011. It's a little difficult to see it. My circle's covering it a little bit. The first step, if you're going to be copying a line from one and then an entire document from another transaction, the first step is to mark that copy box, copy checkbox, all the way to the right of the line. Every line will have it on there. In this case, we just have one. I can't show you multiple. You mark the copy line here for the 10009 document, and then you click the document copy icon for 10011. Once you do that, it'll ask you if you're sure you want to create a new document. You say yes. In this example, we would also get a message that says you have successfully created two new lines because I copied all the lines from this first document here, and then I copied that single line from my second document. And this is what it'll look like. We have both of our green phone lines, the first one from document 10011, and then our second line from 10009. Again, the document number will pull in the next system-generated document number, and then our date will be updated. The next topic, uh, this is the final topic we're going to discuss today for tips and tricks, and it's going to be transaction import. For purposes of this example, we're going to be importing a, an expense report that you've received from your bank, a QF, QFX file. Transaction import is also available underneath the transactions menu. And this is what our window will look like once we get there. We'll kind of go through real quickly the fields that need to be filled out here, what they mean, and why we need them. File type, OFX, QFX, this depends on the file type that you have received from your bank statement. Um, the example we're going to be using here is an American Express statement for a specific month. Um, we've downloaded it from our bank online. We've saved it in the QFX file format. 
user ID will default with your user ID that you are logged in as, and it will also display your username over to the right. Description field. The description you enter here on this window will push over to our expense document header, which I will soon show you. Um, file location, you click the browse button and go locate your file. Bring that in. If you would like to accept duplicate file name, if it's the same file name every time you download it from your bank, you want to mark this checkbox. That way it doesn't reject it. And for any of you who are currently using RecLogic installed in your environment, if you come to this window and click the sample Excel file hyperlink, it'll download for you in a sample Excel file that you would need for uploading, in this case, expense transactions. Something else I'd like to quickly mention, whenever you're within the RecLogic application, any fields that are highlighted in yellow are required fields before you can move on. What's nice is that that field color can be changed if you want it to be red, if you want it to be green or gray, it's up to you. But anything highlighted in yellow is required before you can continue forward. Once this information is filled out completely, you click the import button down at the bottom. And we get to a second import setup screen. First thing to note, we have an, the lines with assigned item IDs will be imported when you click the import button. In this example, if I were to only, if I were to click import as it stands right now, I would only grab that hotels.com 40676 line. That's just something important to note. Expense type can either be paid by employee or corporate account. If you mark paid by employee, it will create a voucher that needs to be paid to the vendor over in Dynamics. The new item ID field, you can use your lookup icon. What will display in that result is any expense type items that you have created within RecLogic. This can be hotel room, phone, mileage, gas, meals, any of those that I had mentioned before that you would use on expenses. To apply your expense item ID, you pull it up in the new item ID field, and then you click the apply item ID to this line um, within your transaction pane. In this example, again, if I were to continue right now, it would only pull in the hotel room. But if I wanted to pull in all of this, I would obviously need an airfare one for my Air Canada. I would need um, car rental, and I would also need I would also need to apply a hotel to a couple others. So once you've uh, applied all of your item IDs to all of the lines you want to bring in on this expense document, you click your import button. And this example, I had actually also brought in one of my Air Canada line with an airfare item ID. But again, the document number is auto-generated. The description will bring over what you typed in in that previous window. Date will auto-populate with the system date. And now we see on here are two lines. In this example, I had pulled in two. I had pulled in an airfare line for Air Canada. And I had also pulled in a hotel room line for Hotels.com. Now that we've completed the presentation portion of the webinar, I would like to open the discussion up for questions and comments. Well, thanks for presenting today, Kelsey. Uh, if anyone has any questions after the fact, feel free to go ahead and use the email addresses on the screen. And uh, we will make this recording available. You'll receive a follow-up email as usual, and it will also be posted to dynamicscare.com. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.